Welcome back to another episode of Gumball Love. I'm Melissa Ledger, your host, and today's episode is inspired by a conversation, again, going on in our private Facebook group. This is going to be a really short podcast because it's impromptu, but I just think it's an important topic to be discussed, and I just wanted to give you some quick thoughts on it because I know a lot of, I've, I've seen this, uh, I've seen this several times where when you're, you meet a guy early on and you have sex, like maybe the first date or the second date, and you're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Like, is he, is he going to pull away now? I feel bad. Um, like one girl's like, I feel really slutty. And so I want to just give you a different perspective on this because I do not believe in passing judgment in this area at all. And so my take on it is going to be kind of different only because of the research that I've done and kind of like unconventional research. So as you know, gumball love is the concept of attention addiction, where I believe that there are certain men and women that use attention as their love language, as their currency. And so attention is always, it's consumable. It, you always need more. It's like where real love is sustainable. It's kind of like healthy food versus eating sugar. It's the same thing. The gumball, even in its real physical form, it's just so temporary. It offers no uh, sustainable um, nutrition where if you eat something like protein, it's going to give you a much more lasting effect. And the same is true with true love. Like true love sustains over long periods of time. Like you don't need somebody, when you know you have true love, you don't need that person to constantly reassure you. Like I don't need my mom or sister to be constantly telling me how they feel about me. I know because it's been established over time and there's a foundation and it's just there and it's solid. Same thing with your best friends where it's just accumulates over time. So now I want you to think back. I'm going to use my friend Brandy, for example. When I met Brandy, um, she was actually quite a bit younger than me, but she felt like family to me immediately. It was weird. It was like very few times in life do you meet someone where you're like, this feels like a sister. This feels like this is oddly comfortable and familiar. And so it was like, Even her, our sense of humor could be off color sometimes, inappropriate. I just had a sense where like, I just, I didn't take offense to anything she did because I just loved her immediately. And of course, even though I felt that way, I still, you know, had to take time to get to know her and we developed a relationship anyway. So I'm telling you this because when we really like somebody, we know it immediately. I just want you to think about that. Like when I like somebody how to like, can they really make that many mistakes and turn you off when you're like super into them? There's something about them that just draws you in, that pulls you in and you just really like them. Even dumb stuff they do, quirky things they do, the way they walk, the way they talk, their sense of humor, the way they laugh, it all draws you in. Okay. So when it comes to Um, we're going to talk about like when you have sex early on, which I don't recommend only because it really, it it does release. I've talked about this in the, I think in the last podcast where it releases those bonding chemicals and pheromones. And when we do this early on, it kind of accelerates that process of where we want to get to know somebody and get comfortable and feel like we can trust them. And so I want you to have ideally lay a foundation so where when you do finally decide to have sex, it's you're not worried, is this person going to leave? Are they going to be, are they going to pull away? Like, I don't want you to have those fears. However, when you study actual players, like I used, I've invested a considerable amount of time studying Neil Strauss and the pickup artists and how they operate and how they picked up women. And at first it was like really gross to study this. And I'm actually going to go into way depth in a product that I'm creating about all of this. So um, this is just going to be kind of like a reader's digest version. But, and if you followed me for a while, you may have heard me talk about this where these guys, uh, there's actually a quote in, in the book itself in, because Neil Strauss wrote two books where he used, he was a, 
pick up artist in one and then he kind of changed his ways and he realized he had an addiction he called it um like he had a, a sex addiction and but in the book where he's the pickup artist he writes about how it wasn't ever about the sex it was about being accepted it actually says that in the book they're trying to feel accepted with this attention from women and it didn't matter if in the time that they were picking up the women in the bar if they took the moment had sex or not it was like this this idea of conquering and being able to get that girl to focus on him it was like can i get because you know he was a guy that would be overlooked by a woman that he would call like the 10 type girl and so if he could get a girl that he scored as a 10 to focus on him or get his give her his uh, give him her phone number then it was like that's that's the high and the rush that he would get so it gets back to the attention I remember reading that going oh my gosh it was like one of those pieces very early on when I was creating this concept that it's about that validation the attention the gumball is about validation so the reason I'm telling you this is because if a guy has sex with you and then he leaves it was about him feeling validated in the moment. It wasn't about getting to know you and connecting with you because getting to know you and connecting with you, it also has nothing to do with whether or not you're interesting enough or whether he, you're cool enough. Like there's so many things out there. They're like, do this or don't do that because you're going to turn them off. But actually it's more about, is this person on a search for someone that they can connect with and build a relationship with? Or are they feeling so deprived inside about themselves that the interaction with a woman is to kind of satisfying them at, a, at for the moment, like a drink of water. That gumball is like, oh, okay, I feel better about myself. Now I can go about my day. Where the focus was never on the actual person giving the validation. Does that make sense? So when you're with a gumball guy, it's never about you. It's about you making him vet feel validated. So that when I was interacting in the private Facebook group, I was thinking we're focused on the wrong things. Like, oh my gosh, if, I, if you have sex with a gumball guy or you don't, he's going to get scared off regardless. So that's why I want you to be careful in the beginning because intimacy is what will scare them because intimacy is like, I see you, I see your flaws, I see like, and sex can excel, sex does accelerate that because A, you are physically naked and it just, there's a closeness and there's cuddling. This is why the guys that bolt with the cuddling part, because that's also very intimate. It's very close. It makes them feel vulnerable. It makes them feel vulnerable. And a lot of weak men will be like, I don't like the cuddle because they, they have excuses for this but healthy men do because they're not afraid of it. They want the closeness. They want the intimacy. That's like normal for a healthy guy. I've seen this over and over and over again with the healthy relationships and the healthy couples. I would watch men like, like, you know, men that would are very macho and, and manly, but they weren't afraid to hold on to their girlfriend or cuddle her if we were out and about or have like all my cousins that are married to great guys and we'd be out boating and they weren't afraid to wrap their arms around them and cuddle them on the boat as we were riding around and I was thinking yeah that's a solid guy he's not afraid to show his affection he's not afraid to be intimate with his the girl he loves because he's secure in who he is so this is what we have to be looking for is are they secure in who they are because that security is what gives them the confidence to express how they feel even very early on like if things move fast it doesn't like i've seen things move fast with couples that end up get ma getting married if you have two healthy people that are feeling what they feel it doesn't mean they get married right away although some people have this is why i say there's no rules because if if there's two people and they are emotionally ready for that kind of intimacy and things progress a little faster than the next person, it doesn't mean that it's destined for failure just because it went fast. It means that they were just ready. So 
when when we get afraid like oh my gosh i had sex too fast like i see people beating themselves up like ideally right this is not the right decision and we don't want to do this all the time however if it happens i told this girl in private facebook group she was like oh my gosh i feel like you know i feel like i'm a slut or whatever and i was like well the guy was being slutty right with you then you know like he's right there doing the same thing you have to you he's like she said he was a willing participant of course he is and so don't feel bad about yourself when he was doing the exact same thing but isn't it it's just still the stereotype like the girl's the slut and the guy is like you know he's the player but I am determined to change the title of player into a much different, uh, the player is playing games and he has to play games because what are games they are hiding. And if I have to hide, it means I'm afraid to show myself. If I'm afraid to show myself, it's because I'm insecure. And if I'm insecure, it's because I haven't resolved issues. Well, that was a lot right there, <laughs> but I've just thought about that and worked through it so many times. Like now when I see a scared guy or a guy that's like moving too fast on a date I just had this happen to me where he was moving so fast on the day and I could tell he just wasn't connecting with me. And even though I was attracted to him, I just was like, I just stopped it. And I was so proud of myself because, you know, years past, I would have been like, oh, you know, like I'm attracted. I just would have like taken it further, but I just cut it and I just walked out and I was like, yes, I just felt so empowered because I could just tell that he wasn't connecting with me. It was just, he was just all about himself in the moment and it didn't feel good to me. And I was just like, yeah, I'm out of here. This is, this is not, this is not where I want to be. So that's what we want to be looking at is, are you, are you connecting? And even you know, I say this because I, I paused there because sometimes the gumball guy can really make you feel like you're connecting. And like I've said in the past podcast, there's just no way we can know 100%. Um, the best way you can manage this is to take things a little slower or just um, test things out. Like talk about, tell a long story about your childhood or, you know, see if they're really interested. What questions are they asking? Are they asking like, where did you grow up? And what is your family? And are they relaxed? Or is it like, are they asking these questions, but they're trying to be really close to you physically and gazing into your eyes right where you're telling a story, but you feel like he's trying to make it romantic. That means he's just turning up the intensity where he's like, I know, I just think you're just so beautiful. And he's, and he's being very like affectionate. That's not somebody who's really paying attention to you when you're talking about like something that's not romantic. Do you know what I mean? Like you can kind of tell when a guy is pushing the accelerator versus actually re relaxing. Like if you're connecting, you should be coasting. If you're trying to move things along, then you're accelerating, right? So you just want to kind of want to watch that. Those are just some things to look for. But I just wanted to clarify that one little piece that this, this is what we really have to be looking for when it comes to um, intimacy. And what I mean by intimacy is closeness. That is he if, like the only reason, like if he's into you and you had a great date and you happen to have sex, this is the issue that we're addressing. Right or wrong, it happened. Okay, let's just pretend like it happened. I don't want you to think, Oh, because I had sex, that's why he's walking away. Now, on the other hand, if you haven't given him much time, or actually not on the other hand, if he walked away after the sex and you didn't know each other very well, then what was he rejecting? You know what I'm saying? Like he doesn't even know you well enough so what is he rejecting? The limited amount of information that he has about you. He doesn't know where you grew up and maybe what you do for a living, or maybe he knows like a tiny, like, you know, 1% of you. So I want you to think of like, if he never knew you, he's not really rejecting. I, I've had this quote on Instagram before. If he didn't know the real you, he's not rejecting the real you. And it takes a lot of components to be attracted to somebody and, and see them as long-term. I've rejected a lot of guys that are good looking and, you know, they may have a lot of great attributes, but you know how it is. It's just, sometimes it's just not there. So, but what I'm saying is if he, if he chooses to walk away after that, 
and he didn't really know you, then he's not really rejecting the real you because he doesn't know it. But second, if that's what scares him away and that's the only thing, let's say he thought you were attractive and he was really getting to know you and really excited to hang out with you, but then the sex scares him away, that means that getting close scares him away and that he needs to maintain that distance. And a lot of times guys will have sex with you. They disappear for a while because they need to move away for a while to gain strength, so to speak, and then they'll come back. That's why these guys come in and go out and come in and go out. They're out, they're there and then they disappear. They're there and they disappear because if they stay too long, they get too close and that closeness and that intimacy is what they are not ready for. And that's where they become players because they're playing games because there's still a child in there that needs to develop. So we need to see players as kids playing games and you don't need this. This is why I struggled a long time with, is this a game we need to learn how to play? And I'm telling you what, like about two years ago, I really closed in on, yeah, there is no game. Like I, all the married couples, I know the Gottman Institute. In fact, it has to be the complete absence of games. And then, you know, you've got something real. So there are couples that have had sex on the first date and they're married today. There are couples that uh, that waited for marriage and they've they had a great marriage as well. So a, a great relationship. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I know that ideally it's good to wait just so you have a foundation. It's safer to wait. Like I'm going to tell you to wait as long as you possibly can. However, I'd never want you to think that you are rejected because of that or because you did it, it made you less of a woman or that you have to beat yourself up. I want you to really think through the dynamics of connection and intimacy and don't put your worth and value in the balance. And if you're that kind of girl that if having sex early on really messes with you emotionally, I'm that kind of girl too. So I know that I can't do that because I know what it does to me. So sometimes we have to just be like in the moment, yeah, I know I, I want this, but I know how I'm going to feel. And what you do is I just want you to picture that guy turning cold right at the end. That's always like a great mental image for me. Like all of a sudden at the end, he's cold, he leaves. And then that's like a great way to inspire you to like cut it off because it's just, I, I've never, ever regretted doing that ever because it just, it's like, it's very empowering and it also it also really indicates where that guy is, if he can handle that kind of rejection. Obviously, we don't want to leave men too far because that's how rapes happen or we get into bad situations. That's for another podcast. But you know what I mean? Like, you know, but it's, either, either way, if, if you're, you're, you're in the heat of the moment and you're like almost at the finish line, it is okay to say no at any point, at any point. And a good guy might be a little frustrated but he should be really cool about it and very respectful. And, and most guys are. So um, don't feel bad about it. And don't apologize. Just say, I'm not comfortable. I need to slow down. I really like you. But I need, you know, I just, I need to like, I need to stop. And that's okay. Because I want you to feel good at the end of every date and feel confident. But if he walks away or he texts you less, don't start, don't start like, selling yourself or apologizing for behavior. I don't want you to do that because if he likes you, he likes you. And if he's able and willing to have intimacy and bond and have that closeness, he will do it. So I just want you to feel empowered by this and, and don't, don't beat yourself up because I think in the past, like girls like us who have dated gumball guys, this is sort of a pattern we get into. Oh, he pulled away because I had sex too soon. And then sometimes they will even put that in your face. They'll say something that's like, well, you were right there. You did the same thing. So this is, this is not the woman's like, you know, this isn't like 1920. You know what I mean? Like, don't let a guy put you or make you feel that way or make you feel less than. Because it always gets back to intimacy, closeness. Are they ready or are they afraid? And are they putting up walls or are they just afraid to be close? So I hope this helps you. This is very impromptu. Oh, and one more thing. In the, in the comments, she mentioned that the mystery is gone after sex. And 
I wanted to, I, I told her in this group, but I want to tell you all, all of you as well, that if someone feels like the mystery is gone after one time having sex, they have no idea how to discover all there is to discover about a person. I mean, think about it. Like if you meet a guy and you're really excited about him and you have sex, like, do you feel like the mystery is gone? Like, no, you're still on the adventure to discover so many other things about him, everything about him. Like if you've, if you've had sex and it's day one, it's like, it's still just the beginning. And if he doesn't see it that way and he feels like all the mystery is gone, like all the fun's over because he had sex once, this isn't a good guy. Like if you just interview, this is what I want you to do. I want you to just talk to men that you know, and at first you might feel uncomfortable asking. So ask men that you feel the most comfortable with. Don't be afraid to ask men of all ages, especially the ones in established relationships and say, can I ask you some questions? And and just say, this is what I'm going through in the dating world. And I'll tell you a lot of times, good men, their answers are, are a lot of times short, but they're, they're gold. And this is why I never want you to feel like you're dependent on me or any other quote unquote dating. I don't even consider myself an expert. I just want this kind of conversation to be happening. And I don't see it anywhere. I don't see, I see people talking about tips and tricks and, and, you know, do this and don't do that. But I don't see people talking about real relationships, what it takes to actually build real intimacy. What are actually, what are actual men doing that are really having intimate relationships and that are good husbands and good fathers and that show up every day? Like, what are they doing? What are they thinking? What is that like? And there's actually an interview uh, with um, Adam and Kim Veely in our private Facebook group. It We did it, I think, last year. But Adam is amazing and he goes through, I'm going to try to get him on the podcast again because we just want, we need to have that conversation again. And I want to introduce all the new people that have joined to them again, because it's just really helpful to hear, oh, that's what it, that's what it sounds like when a guy's committed. And so sex shouldn't end the mystery. My gosh, this is like a super shallow dude. If he's like, oh, I've had sex. So I guess it's like reading the first page of a book and thinking you know the whole thing. Like, no, there's all these chapters. There's all these things. You haven't even discovered that. If you think you've discovered everything because you had sex once, that's that's a really shallow person. Somebody you don't even want to be with anyway. So don't make sex be the main theme of the story. Like people say sex is 10% of a relationship, but when it's bad, it's 90%. Um, but it, it really is a very small part of the whole relationship, your friendship, your foundation, what you like to do together, what you guys talk about, you know, like if you can laugh together, if you can just hang out. I mean, I look at relationships now and think if this person got, you know, a handicap from the waist down and there was no sex, like, is this somebody I'd still want to hang out with every day? It should be the person you want to hang out with every single day and the person you want to talk to. Those are the things that are important and that's what you have to discover. It's not just the sex. So it, 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 sex is a very, it's, it's important because it's chemistry, it's attraction, it's all those things. But I want, if, if you've had sex early on and he's still calling and he's still texting and you guys are still going out, then don't make it a huge issue. And you know what? If you had sex early on, it's perfectly okay to say, you know, I know that we had sex. However, I, I want to slow down a little bit. I just don't want to become too focused on the physical part of our relationship. It's okay to cut it off, even if you've done it once. You're you, and and if he doesn't respect that, again, not a quality guy. So I just want you to feel liberated and and know that if it's the right person, they're still going to be interested in you. They're still going to be curious. There's so much mystery to you. There's so much to be discovered about him and you. It's equal. This is another thing I've changed in my mind about, you know, I don't feel like like women are princesses and he should be like doing all these crazy things. Like it's it's mutual. It's a discovery of both people. It's a partnership and and that you discover together and that you become like a team. You're you're a team, right? So you want to be like, is this my teammate or is this somebody that's just using me for validation? Is this somebody that's really connecting? Is this somebody that's really going to have true intimacy with me for the long term? Okay, so 
I just wanted to add that last little tidbit. I hope this helps. So I love hearing from you. Please join our private Facebook group. You go to facebook.com forward slash coach Melissa Ledger. There's a link at the top uh, for the VIP group. You can join right there. And please answer the questions just so I know uh, how you heard about the podcast. It also helps me keep trolls or weird people out of of the uh, the group. So just tell me. I always ask if you're single or in a relationship and how you heard about it. So, uh, And if you have any other comments you want to add, you can always do that right there. Or you can send me an email, melissa at gumballlove.com. Talk to you soon.